Hello and welcome. This is Red McNed with another build idea for you. Um, this this idea came about. Well, it's been around for a little while. People have been make, you know making whirlpools on Minecraft for quite some time. But I was never quite satisfied because there seemed like there was always a structure that had to stay beneath it, or there was like some weird mechanic that's no longer no longer works in Minecraft. So when I was doing my water towers, I realized that you can do that underwater. So here it is, the uh, the lovely whirlpool. And I'm, I was I was so happy when I actually got this to work. It took quite a few tries, but it actually is uh, nice and seamless, and it's right at the water's uh, right at the water level. So. I don't know how there's so many pigs down there. But anyways, what makes me the most happy about this is that there's nothing, no invisible blocks, no, uh, is, this is entirely reduplicable, blah, uh, this is entirely duplicable. Haha. -ha. You can make it in survival, let's just say that. And it took a little bit of interesting manipulation of water but I want to show you how to make this because I don't think that uh, I think that this is kind of a cool uh, concept that hasn't really been uh, used very much and I haven't seen one of these built quite like this so I'm pretty happy about it and I would really like to show you guys how I did it oh an extra feature that's kind of fun the reason why I have this boat here is check this out you can ride the whirlpool if you come at it from the side. Imagine if you were having like duels or something in boats. This would be pretty cool. It eventually throws you into the bottom or back up the side. Anyways, you kind of you get, you get the idea. You bounce around, and a fun time is had by all. I'll leave the boat in there. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to make this. All right, if we come over here, we can see the uh, structure that was used to make this. Now, this is a nice big funnel that I built, and if you put water where the green pieces are, it'll flow in and create the, uh, the whirlpool shape. And if you wanted to just make one of these, um, and not not have to do the extra work to make it swim through and stuff. Because that, that is a lot of extra work. You could just do that, and black wool won't show through water as much as other things, so that's what I used it for. But if you want to go the extra mile and actually make this, like the one over there, swim through, you have to put a little extra effort into it. And that means this part down here. This This ring marks where the water would be all hollowed out and after you pour the water on top and remove the structure the water would come down this trench here keeps the water from outside from coming in and making source blocks. So you can see it's pretty complicated actually with all all that combined and all that extra work you can actually have a pretty darn cool thing I think which is totally worth the the grind to make it possible and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now before we go into a big version of this, I want to just kind of show you what you're in for on a scaled down version just to see if you're uh, up to what you actually we're going to be doing. I'm going to basically make a mock whirlpool. So we have the square shape column right here and I'm gonna make it, uh, I'm just gonna make this really simple so I'm gonna make each layer just go out one. Next we're, next we're going to drain out the water in the inside. Now we're gonna make a cylinder. Basically everywhere that it's touching this I'm going to be putting up a pillar. Now I'm going to do the rest from below. Here on the inside of the cylinder I'm going to use sponges and remove all of the water. That's pretty much all of it. 
Now I'm going to be digging down one at each spot where the wall comes in contact. And I mean every spot has to have at least one space. So I'm checking that for all of them. And I'm going to put water. in all of these spots. Next I'm going to remove the funnel from the bottom up. Next I can safely take away these pillars from the bottom up. We are now up to the last ring and if all the preparations have been successful you can knock these out without worrying about the water coming in to fill, a, fill in the uh, whirlpool you just made. And there you have it. That is how you make... That's This is how you would make a miniature version of the whirlpool. If this looks like it's too much effort or too drawn out, then the bigger one is going to be way more daunting and way more work. But if you think this is doable, um, this is kind of the mechanics of it all at work. The bottom, they're all cliffs, sort of, so, or trenches, so the water does not fill in. This it looks like it's all the same water blocks, but in fact, some of them are source blocks, but the ones inside and underneath are just the water falling, and it looks exactly the same. And I'm going to go on to a bigger model if you think that you're ready. Because this bigger one is going to take a lot of effort and time. Probably like an hour. And this is just in creative. Alright, to help out with the uh, the authenticity of this build, I'm realizing that it's going to be done in an environment that's like an actual world, I decided to find an ocean in the uh, server I've played on. And I think I found a pretty good spot to try to put it. Um, I'm going to put right here, because it's about, I'm going for extra credit on this one, making it almost 30 deep. I think that if you have 20 or uh, 20, it could probably work, but it's, I, I'm only assuming it looks cooler when it's deeper, so let's find out for sure. But I also have a night vision potion on me, and a couple of, this, of these supplies I think we will need. So... The first thing that you want to do after you pick a spot, and hopefully it's a flat spot, because it's going to need a big lot of room. I'll show you exactly how big of a lot of room it needs. But we're going to start off by making a cylinder the size of the entire whirlpool's edge. That is going to be 38 blocks in diameter. So that's... I'm going to start by making it underwater. Let's go ahead and make this the center. And since it's an even number, this is going to make the finding the center easier. So you're going to count out from here half of 38, which is 19. So including this one, it's going to include the block you place. So 1, 19. Let's go ahead and put the other one next to it just so it's, we don't have to argue about which one's in the center. You're going to do that in all four directions. Now that you have them all out there, you've probably noticed something, that the ground is never perfectly flat. What we're going to do is we're going to finish this cylinder and then we're going to worry about flattening out the uh, the ground. But first let's build the cylinder. So you're going to go to each of these sides and this section is going to be eight long. So since this is the middle we're going to count this and put one, two, three, four and counting this one, two, three, four. 
Then you're gonna come down and do one. You're gonna do two. Come down another angle and do two. And then it's gonna be ones until it meets on the other side. So this is also gonna be two. And then two. And then it's gonna be a straight diagonal until it hits the other. So you're gonna do that to all of these. Right, now this should all have connected up and you should have a nice lovely ring with, uh, I guess, different level changes in between. If it didn't connect up, odds are that either this was counted wrong or it's not perfectly centered. But if those are connected, we are going to build up all of these as a tower and it's going to make a giant cylinder that reaches all the way up into the sky. Not into the sky, just to the top of the water. So this this is going to be a part that is resource heavy and is going to take some time. Some potions. Hopefully you have water breathing too if you're doing this in survival. Uh, but basically you're going to do this to each of those down there. Alright, now that you got that it's time for the next part, which is draining it all out. So that is, as you guessed, a very fun part. Luckily it's made better by having sponges. So it's kind of tough to drain this much out. You can't really spam sponges and hope for the best. So what I do is I sort of make a line at water level every uh, three blocks maybe and uh, kind of repeat that I wonder if it works out, well eh, I'll, I'll keep it with this And as you can see, this could take quite some time. So, you guessed it, it's going to take a lot of sponges. But it's better than when uh, we didn't have sponges. So, there's that. If you want a method that doesn't involve trying to dodge the water or floating around, you could also do the build a bridge method, where you crouch, walk backwards, and hold down the place button. Well, if you're crazy like me, it means you actually did it, and this is what you have now. Um, if you're not crazy like me, there's no harm in that. You can just build it in the water and you know, drain out only the parts that are going to be a part of the funnel. So now that the whole thing is free of water, there's just one thing you have to do to make sure that the water doesn't come rushing back in when you take away the walls. And that is basically go around to the sides and just dig down one from any... Uh... So you're sort of making a trench for the water to go into. So instead of flowing over the ground and uh, refilling, it's going to drop off into this and it's not going to be able to make any new source blocks, which will leave this entire cylinder open. Um, and just all you have to do is make sure that there's one block at least here and one at least here. So going all the way around and see if you have something like this just make sure there's at least one block here it's fine if there's two here that's no big deal just make sure there's at least one here alright so as, as you can see I took it I took away everything actually that w I went down one level pretty much on everything and if there was a drop off like if there was a drop off like this I made sure that there was at least one down so you should never have a spot that looks like this and I really highly stress that like check double check 
like if this you know this is about as close as you can get to to bending the rules right here <laughs> but like you really even this makes me nervous so I would, I'm going to go ahead and do that but you really and maybe that don't want this thing to fill in afterwards it's probably one of the worst feelings you can have so don't don't let it do that <laughs> um i took away everything one block down if you want to be really sophisticated and really hide your tracks well you you can go two blocks down and then do one layer of gravel on top so basically replace everything with gravel so that people to stumble upon this it won't be just like a smooth circle in the water like they might actually be like, well, wait, what's going on here, or whatever. Or at least they, it won't be so easy to figure out, at least from the what's going on. This way, it's, it's uh, but this, this is good enough. This is good enough. <laughs> Although if you've done this much work, then, all right, you talked me into replacing it with gravel. I'm going to use a block that's easy to see, so I'm going to use red. But if you are not going to be doing all this extra steps to empty empty everything out, I would go with the black wool. I'm just using this to make it uh, easier to see. So pick a flat side such as this one. So you're going to find the middle. You're going to go down one. You're going to come out six. So one, two, three, four five, six. At the very end you'll put three on the side, then one more so you can go out one. You're going to put another like that, same thing, and then just one. So it's three here, ah, three here, then two here, two here, and then one. And you're going to come over to each side and do this exact same thing. And it's going to be three, and then two, two more, and then one. So you do that to all sides and fill it in. So now that you've built this, build down on the furthest end points, one. So sort of like a ring, like this. And at each side, find the middle, come in four, And this time, we're going to put two on each side. Actually, I'll, I'll do one side at a time again. So two, and then we're going to go one, two. Then you're going to go one. Then you're going to go one. And two. going this way though. And that should connect up with this one in the middle. So one, two, three, four, with two, with two. So there we go. That's what we should want. And after you build that, bring it down one also. Ah. So each of these come down one on the inside like that. Dramatic, isn't it? Alright, now that we have that next ring done, we can come on down and come in two, and we're going to go two on the side, and just one this time, and just one this time. If you go to the next side, we're going to come in two, go two on the side, then just one until it meets up. 
we can do that to every side the same way. And go down one. For this ring, you're just making a uh, one, putting one block on each face of the wall. So just like this. Bringing it down as usual. This next level is just two on each side with a two gap in the middle and one right in the corner. Everything, everything down. Yes, even this little notch in the back. Everything must go to. This next level will just be filling in the notch, actually. <laughs> and bring all that down. For this next level, you're just going to put one in each or two in each corner. And bring it down. And bring it down again. All right, now you're just putting in this to each of these sides. Leave that middle space. And down again. Now we put the ones in the corners. And the whole thing comes down one. Next we fill in the side ones. It's getting a lot more straightforward and we go down three so bring on down one two three we are in it this time now we just put two in each corner and after you put these in you do not have to go down any further because the water is going to just go straight down which means congratulations you've built the funnel now you're going to take the water bucket, and it's very important to place the water not at every edge, but at just the ones that I specify, which is going to be all this, which can be achieved by doing every other, and the corner. So it's going to be like that for each wall, but for the corners, it's just going to be in the corner there, in the corner there. Skip one. Skip one. We're going to be skipping. And then to this corner. That corner, and then this whole side, because it's this side. Exciting, yeah? We're almost there. The reason why I didn't fill in these corners here is because it's going to make a wedge if I do. It's going to decide to make a bunch of infinity water supplies that end up cutting in here. And if you don't believe me, just watch. See, and this kind of ruins that. So I'm going to redo this without that. I went ahead and just drank another uh, night vision potion. But what we can do now is we can actually take out... We're going to leave the green blocks, the cylinder, but we're going to take out the funnel pieces starting from the bottom. And I'm going to show you what happens on this side.
Alright, so what you should see happening as you go is that you'll knock out blocks and the water will flow down if the water is on top of them. But it shouldn't be changing anything about what the block, what the water is doing above it because you're starting from the bottom. So the water has already chosen its destiny and it's still keeping its shape, or it should be. <laughs> so as you take away the blocks you're basically going to get to where you get closer and closer to the cylinder. Alright, we're getting to the point where the top is actually uh, going to flatten out and more and more water is creeping in. So you can actually duck inside here and kind of see what it's going to look like. Um, it's holding its shape just because each of these is well, it's like a tower now. Like each square is like a tower of uh, of water, and nothing's making it not be so. So it's kind of like the water fountains from the last video, but just a lot of them. All right, we're at the final level of wool, I believe, or whatever. And this is without night vision, but you can swim around. You can see. Wow, this looks just like water. The only difference is. This is all falling water, so if I was not flying right now, I would be having a really hard time coming out of this. So, which I think is a f is a bonus because if it's a whirlpool, it should be pulling you down. So I see it as a feature, not a uh, not anything bad. So now we're gonna take away all of this red. All right, now at this point, you can go ahead and put back these put these water source blocks here. And they will not fill in. So now here comes the moment of truth. We're going to find out if we did the bottom right. If you didn't, this whole thing is going to fill right in and it's just going to become that again, just ocean. So you better hope you did the bottom right and you made sure to check that there's a trench for the water to go in. We'll we'll go down there and we'll take out the wall. One piece at a time. Starting from the bottom. What helps about this is you know that it's just the green parts that you need to get rid of. So don't take away anything else unless you've placed it. And start from the bottom. A good indicator that you're going to probably be okay but it's not guaranteed is if you notice that the water is not filling in at the level that you are cut that you uh, dug already. Like if you didn't do anything to the trenches, this would be underwater for sure, all the way up to where it could flow in from. So that's a good sign. I wonder if I can see it. Yeah, it's still there. Okay, good. Do, do, do. Do. All right, we're we're just about done here. This is uh, looking pretty good. Uh, it looks like we've got about one more ring, and it's not. It hasn't filled in yet. It hasn't filled in, so uh, looks like we're going to be successful. But this this is kind of the the scariest part here. Is just if you if you truly know that you've done everything right, when you take out this ring and everything is still left. Um. So let's. See. Looks good so far. Mm. 
Uh, that'd be absolutely just terrible if it was filling in. It, it looks like it's not, though. Yep. It looks like... Wow. Man, this is... Not, I, not like, oh, wow, wow, it's actually working. It's just I, I haven't built... Um, I've only built one of these so far. So... Oh man. This is this is the second one I've ever built. And there it is. There it is. Yes. Yes. I mean, of course, I knew it would work. I knew it would work. But look at that. That is that is it. Let's see from the yeah, <laughs> from all the angles. We have ourselves a whirlpool. Man, so that was, that worked very, very nice. I'm really happy I was able to build it. And thanks for uh, checking this out. And I hope that, I hope that this was uh, educational about what you can do with water. This was kind of a fun, this, this is probably one of the, uh, the, the craziest things I've, I've uh, built so far, I think. Definitely uh, one of the most one of the more complicated things this is not just, you know, putting blocks down, but it's the order is so necessary to keep right. So now, now that you, 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 you see how it works and that it does in fact work, hopefully you can, uh, put it, put it to good use or, uh, come up with different, different things to do, uh, kind of similar stuff. Like this doesn't have to be a, uh, a, a whirlpool. It could be any, any shape, but this was, this was definitely my, uh, my first thought of or guess of um, what would be a cool thing to try to be able to do. So yeah, hopefully it worked for you. And who knows? Maybe, maybe you'll see us again. And uh, if I if I start a, a let's play series or uh, or uh, anything like that. And I hope this has been uh, informative and educational and all that fun stuff. So this has been Red McNed. See you guys.